Fund flows is one of the sort of key elements that um, investors really like to look at to understand kind of what's really driving markets. Uh, could you just maybe explain you know, what it is that you're looking at and why it is that these sort of fund flows and flows in general are such an important barometer for markets? Well, LIP has been providing fund analytics, uh, performance and flow data for about half a century. Now, uh, I'm focused on the UK market, but we're also obviously this takes place in the context of um, global markets. Um, and it's really giving us a, a good insight into investor sentiment, both in terms of longer term, but also there's a lot of noise in the market at the moment. I'm looking at one month after another and going, you know, a lot of this makes no sense and it only becomes clear in the longer period. And which of the, you mentioned the UK, which are the funds that you particularly focus on in terms of getting your, your kind of information and, and the sources that you have? Predominantly mutual funds and ETFs, which is where the mo most of the, uh, the fund assets are. We also look at pension funds and uh, insurance funds and some hedge funds. But really the main focus for me is uh, mutual funds and uh, ETFs. And those are, is it the flows in the UK context, or is it that flows from UK companies that, that you're focused on? It's not looking at domicile, because a lot, a lot of what UK investors take on are obviously domiciled uh, either in Ireland or in Luxembourg. So we're really looking at um, currency of record being sterling and registered for sale in the UK. And that gives you, re there's nothing exact about this, but that gives you the best picture of uh, what UK investors are buying. So, so I'm going into the context now of, of the actual flows themselves, and if maybe we split up the sort of the, the history, recent history, into two parts, sort of 18 months up to March and then post-March. The best-selling asset class over uh, uh, 21 was bonds, despite the fact that uh, performance last year, as with this, has been none too impressive. My best guess with that is what we've seen there is institutional investors basically top up their accounts as uh, the values of their fixed income uh, portfolios have fallen. Over um, uh, 21, up to March as well, and possibly a little bit further beyond, the best-selling asset class or uh, has been uh, within equities has been global equities. And for UK investors, what we've seen them do is uh, abandon domestic equities and uh, get into global. So this is, this is the UK, kind of all types of UK investors are basically saying, we want out of the UK domestic equity market. Yeah. We're going to go out into the broader world. And do you think that's because they were overweight in the first place and it's been a, dealing with that overweight? Up until the end of last year, it's been a performance issue very much. I mean, UK equities have underperformed for a very long period. They've been a pariah asset class um, since the Brexit referendum, if not before. Uh, this year is quite surprising because obviously UK equities, particularly UK blue chips, have strongly outperformed other global markets really until, uh, until June. And we've seen uh, international investors start to dip their toes back into UK blue, blue chips, but that hasn't re doesn't seem to have made any difference for um, UK investors. We've seen two billions worth of outflows so far in UK equities by UK investors in, in June alone, and that's quite unusual. That's a, that's a heavy flow. If someone had asked me recently where you'd have thought there'd be the flows going in, it would be value areas, value indices, places like Australia, places like the UK, which is big on mining, big on you know, um, the oil companies, which have done well. And yet, even when the outperformance was there, you still saw net sellers of that. Yes, absolutely, with the UK market. And as I said, international investors um, are, are taking a nibble out of the UK market now. But they're, they're by no means this year have they, have they gone, oh, look, value-driven performance, energy stocks, fantastic. Let's get in there and fill our boots, which you might expect. It really hasn't happened. It's been incremental, whereas UK investors have largely gone now, as they've done for years previously. So it could potentially open up, I mean, assuming that you know, we stay in this world of value over growth, and obviously there's so many moving parts to that. But if we stay in a, a world which is largely expectation of value out performance, it could be an interesting place for people to go because it's been basically sounds like one-way traffic of selling, even when that, that value factor has been outperforming. Yeah, yeah, very much the case. Um, over the past month, we've seen uh, growth rally a little bit uh, and it's outperformed uh, value, but that's no, by no means a done deal. So the, the market's doing a lot of flip-flacking at the moment. As I said, I'm surprised that um, international investors in particular and UK investors uh, to a degree, just tactically to take advantage of this, haven't responded in uh, more decisively than we've seen. And do you feel that um, you know, you're seeing these sort of moves within the equity space? There has been this sense recently that um, investors got very, very bearish in terms of their, their sort of tone. 
But some of the sort of position surveys suggest that people have actually held on to equities. They haven't rotated en masse out of equities. They've got very, very negative on equities. Are you seeing anything like that over the last um, couple of months, month, three months, where you're seeing people are actually hung, hanging on to equities or has there been some serious liquidations going through? Well, you're right to identify March as something of a turning point because uh, globally things do turn very bu- bearish in both bonds and equities from, from March, whereas prior to that, um, you'd seen a gradual reduction, but then it goes boom, and both bars become negative. And do you, are you able to get any sense at all when you're sort of looking across the whole board that, you know, are there any differences between what institutions and maybe sort of more retail type, type funds are doing? Do you get to get that granularity as well? It's quite hard to tell because you can get an institutional share class on a retail platform and then that's divvied up between investors. So it's not as easy uh, as it was 10, 20 years ago to go, this is an institutional share class that is being bought by retail investors. Um, Other than, as I said, just speaking to people in the market and then getting the sense of where the particular interests are. And then I guess finally, within all of this, you know, as we, not really looking forward, because obviously we're looking at fund flows, but do you get a sense from the, the client base of, of any apprehension at the moment, any sort of feeling that you know, we, we, you know, we've had inflation, we're talking about growth, potential recession. Do you see from the client base um, any sort of feeling that this is going to be a tricky six months ahead of us? I think looking at month on month flows, um, the, the lack of a clear trend there, as, a, as I said, you look longer term and things fall out, but uh, May figures, for instance, May data just said that it, that was a US month. Everybody was taking up US assets, whether it was um, bond, or equity, you know, safe haven. That's not the case in uh, June. Um, I saw people taking a nibble out of short-term bonds um, and linkers last month. Again, not the case this month. It's where you think they would be. What's taking off uh, in June is emerging market debt, and that could well be a trend going forward because um, emerging market central banks in some instances, particularly with local currency, are seen to have moved uh, further uh, and certainly earlier than uh, domestic markets. But, you know, what will happen in July? I ha- genuinely have no idea at the moment. There's a lot of noise. So it sounds like in some ways, in the way that we've got this great uncertainty from inflation, will that remain sticky from here or will it reduce? We've got uncertainty on growth and potentially recession. That's been reflected in this uncertainty in the flows that you've seen in the last couple of months. Yeah, very definitely. No clear trends at the moment, certainly over the short term. Great. Well, thanks very much for, for, for those insights and, and that, that, those kind of views on what's going on in the flows market. And if you have any questions about this episode, the financial markets or the economy, please put them in the comments section or send them to fmt at lseg.com.